I offer my most humble pranams and salutations at the holy feet of Pujya Gurudev Swami Chinnayananda Ji. I, before his uh, holy memory, on behalf of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh, on the occasion of the 108th birth anniversary of Pooja Gurudev. Revered Swami Sarupananda Ji Maharaj, other revered Swamiji's of the Chinmaya order and other respected uh, saints and sages, all the devotees, Karakartas and other members of the society, my sisters and brothers who have assembled here to commemorate the Astotra Shatha birth anniversary of Pujya Swami Chinmayananda Ji. I personally express my heartfelt thanks to Chinmaya Mission and particularly to Swami Viviktananda Ji, who asked me to participate in this uh, function today, some months ago. Although I was not very keen to address a gathering, generally I am reluctant to speak to a big audience like this. Since I have been a Karyakarta, as it has been introduced here, that uh, I am a Karyakarta, a Pracharak of Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh. So we know how to talk to Karyakartas. But addressing to a learned gathering is always a challenge. However, The blessings of Divya Trayas, Ujja Ramakrishna Deva, Mahasharada, Swami Vivekananda, and Ujja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda is uh, on people like me who lack confidence, who lack knowledge. who are diffident to face a situation and their blessings galvanizes the person. Their ashirvad makes the man to face the challenge and stand confidently against any odds in life and that is what is my experience in my life. The life of Swami Chinmananji is indeed a saga of extraordinary spiritual strength, indomitable confidence, undying nationalist spirit, it has been a life of immeasurable love, tireless service and limitless metaphysical reach. It is most befitting that we are celebrating the Ashtotara Shatha birth anniversary of 
this modern sage deeply rooted in our ancient philosophical tenets and cultural context because the teachings of swami chinmayanand ji his interpretations of the upanishads and the bhagavad gita the vedanta and other spiritual texts of our land to the modern times are most relevant today when the humanity is at crossroads when there is unlimited consumption unbridled commodity culture unchecked battle for one upmanship between castes races parties nations and civilizations the teachings and preachings of the holy land of bharat and as interpreted from time to time like great Swami Vivekananda or his Gurudev Swami Krishna Paramahansa or Swami Shivananda or Pooja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananda. They are all beacon lights for us when we are groping in darkness. So that's why I firmly believe that such celebrations of birth anniversaries of great people are not just one more function for gaiety and happiness for general meeting and exchanging our pleasantries it is to rekindle the divinity that is within us and these celebrations and anniversaries they point towards the duty that we have to perform in our personal lives in our social sphere as part of our national duties and for the entire humanity that's why such celebrations are in a way recharging our lives and the dormant innate goodness in us will have to manifest itself in multiple ways of service and sacrifice so that's why this is very timely that we are remembering Sri Pooja Gurudev. As we all know, Swamiji was a spiritual master, indeed a Vivekananda of our times. When I make this statement, I believe and I know with all responsibility i am making this statement and i am not the first person to say this there have been innumerable people in this land and elsewhere who have recognized swami chinmayananda ji as the modern vivekananda of our times his was a life of Himalayan heights of spirituality, a life of ocean-like depth of knowledge and the vast, his life was a sky-like expanse of service. Pujya Gurudev 
in less than half a century of effort, built a worldwide movement through Chinmaya Mission organization, hundreds of institutions, and millions of devotees and countless admirers and followers. I do not want to dwell much in the details of his uh, early life, his childhood, his education. He was born in this part of the land we all know very well. The Kerala is that way, a land of spirituality like uh, other parts of our country. And you call that this is God's own country. And Kerala's contribution to spirituality is well known. Right from Adi Shankara, then Sri Narayan Guru, Sri Chattambi Swamigal, Puja Ayankali, Puja Tapavan Maharaj. Mata Amritanandamai. And in this galaxy, Swami Chinmayananji is also shining. That's why I salute this state of Kerala for giving such great sages and saints who have shown the path for the humanity. But it is a paradox. Although it is not my subject for today's lecture, I should mention here that a land of such spiritual giants has also has been ruled by the people who call themselves atheists. with an alien ideology. I think that is the test. And that is the challenge for the people. And increasingly, the number of people who have been following the age-old philosophical messages and tenets of this land who have been interpreted and reinterpreted and practiced and preached by such great men and women who have been the sages and saints of our society. And these people are getting inspired to find full meaning for their lives and also extending the service to mankind. Swamiji, as we all know, was well known. He started his uh, life here, born as a son to a couple of this part named as Balakrishna Menon, had his early education in Kerala, then moved to Lucknow, changed from science to humanities, studied law, became a journalist, contributed articles to the then English newspapers, I don't know whether he practiced as an advocate. A young man who questioned the rituals and practices of a religion and those who were being practiced in families and surroundings. A rational man a skeptic youth 
see the similarity with uh, Narendra Nath Dutt, who became Swami Vivekananda. Narendra was also like this. He asked, where is God? Have you seen? And when somebody said that everything is Brahma, Narendra who was smoking, he said, this is cigarette, this is also Brahma. And the smoke that comes out of this cigarette, that is also Brahma. What nonsense it is. This was Narendra Naddath. And he became Swami Vivekananda. We know the history, we know the journey, how Narendra transformed into Vivekananda and became a spiritual master. Here is a Balakrishna who was also skeptic, who also sometimes ridiculed, who questioned as a young man, as a student. And Narendra Nath when we read his biography, we see that uh, he was while playing with his youngsters, with his uh, friends, he would suddenly sit and uh, he goes into trance. He meditates. Here is a Balakrishna who during night get up and sit in mattresses, the bed, and who will chant Om Shivaya Namaha. And during the day, he will question all the rituals. He will ridicule them. A flamboyant boy, young man, but at the same time, deep inside, there was a divinity which was waiting for manifestation, for expression. And that divinity had that spark. That is why that chanting of mantra was going on. So this Balakrishna reaches Lucknow and then as I said, we all know, most of us are devotees here, we know the story of Swamiji's life. He joined the freedom struggle. He wrote articles. He was about to be arrested somewhere in Punjab. But it is a chance factor that he got into the British intelligence department as an underground worker. We, we, we can't understand what is this uh, divine plan that a person who is fighting against the British colonial masters enters into the British intelligence department and works there with a job. something unimaginable. There must be some divine design. And after some time he came out and uh, he was also imprisoned for some time. He was a revolutionary. He supported revolts and rebels against the colonial masters because they had no right moral right to rule over a people and exploit them. That is why the emancipation of this land, of this people was an act of dharma. It was not just patriotism. To liberate Bharat, no doubt it is a patriotic act, but beyond that, it is a call of dharma also. That is what 
the revolutionaries, the freedom fighters of this land, how they understood the freedom struggle of our country. If you turn the pages of the biographies of the great freedom fighters of Bharat, you will find that they were not just expressing their patriotism, their bhakti to the motherland, but at the same time they thought that this is the call of dharma for the entire humanity. And Swamiji belongs to that category. And later on, when he was imprisoned, he fell in. And many revolutionaries in those days, they breathed last behind the bars. People do not even know their names today. How many of us know the second name after Swatantrivir Savarkar in Andaman jails? More than 600 people died. Thousands of people were incarcerated for years and years. And such a thing was happening in many other jails and Swamiji was also, the Balakrishna Menon was inside jail and then for the fear of public rage, for the fear of inquiry by the British authorities, the local jail authorities threw out some such such freedom fighters who were suffering from ailments. And Balakrishna Menon was also thrown out. And he was in the street, and here comes a divine intervention. A lady sees him, watches him, and then takes care of him for some time. When I read this, Years ago, when I re was reading about Swamiji, I remember, and most of you must also remember, how Vivekananda, when he reached America, much before the time of the World Religious Conference, not having anything, anybody to contact, in that cold winter, he was shivering and uh, sitting there by the side of the road, by the footpath, by sidewalks. A lady sees him from her windows and approaches and takes him to home. And Vivekananda got food and shelter there in America in an unknown land. And the lady was not knowing who this man is. And here, a similar thing takes place. So that's why when I say, Vekananda's life in many parts, it reenacted in the life of Swamiji. Swamiji started writing articles in the newspapers and his pen name was Mochi. Why he chose that Mochi, we don't know. Mochi, as we all know, is a cobbler. And he wrote in his essays and stories about the underdog, about the downtrodden, about the poor, about the people who are in want who are in miseries, who are facing hardships. Feel for them. Serve the man. Because every man has a divinity inside. And you serve the man, you serve the God. Nar Seva hi Narayan Seva. Manav Seva hi Madhav Seva. And Swamiji was writing through his articles, he was spreading this message. Feel for the poor. Him I call him Atman. 
whose heart bleeds for the poor. Otherwise, he is a Duratman. Swami Vivekananda's famous quotation. I felt when uh, Mochi, why Swamiji chose this? What is the work of a cobbler? He, he makes shoes and chapels so that you can walk on the path without getting these things, without getting your feet pained, troubled, burnt, pricked. That is the work of a mochi because he prepared the footwear. Here is a mochi who prepared a philosophical, spiritual footwear for the peoples, millions of people who walked so that they will not get pricked, they will not get that their feet burnt. Another thing also, mochi, M-O-C-H-I. At that time he was Balakrishna Menon, but later on he became Monk Chinmaya. Was there a divine design? When he chose Mochi, his pen name, to write articles, he was not knowing, at least, that his uh, Diksha, of the name after Diksha will be Chinmayananda. But a divine design must be there, he will be Mank Chinmayan. Swamiji, he went to Rishikesh to interview as a journalist. He wanted to interview Swami Shivananda. He did his interview and the rest is history. He was influenced by that magnificent, magnetic, personality of Swami Shivananda who inspired him. He went there for one day for the interview and he started repeatedly going there. He became disciple of Swami Shivananda and ultimately Swami Shivananda became his Diksha Guru and as we all know, revered Swami Shivananda asked him to go to Swami Tapon Maharaj and he became his Shiksha Guru. And I have heard, I don't know whether uh, that is a fact or not, I heard that when uh, Swami Chinmayananji on the orders of, advice of Swami Sivananda, he went to Tapon, Swami Tapon Maharaj to Gangotri from CK. Tapon Maharaj asked him whether you have brought a letter. I don't know, Swamiji, this is what I heard. I have not read, but I have heard from some devotees. And then Tapon, ji, Tapon Maharaj ji asked where is the letter. He had not taken any letter. She went there on the advice of Swami Sivananda. Tapon Maharaj asked, bring the letter. Sisters and brothers, the year was not 2024, where from Gangotri you can come to Rishikesh because of uh, the highways that have come up in these years. He had to walk all through, took the letter from Swami Shivanathi and again walked back to reach the pond. Unless and until this penance is there, a Swami Chirmayananda cannot be created. Unless and until this commitment is there, a Swami Chirmayananda cannot be molded. Unless and until such dedication and submission to the Master 
is not there, a Swami Chinmayananda cannot manifest. So this is the life of Swamiji. It all looks as if it is a demon, but here is a man, a man with blood and flesh, who met people, interacted with men and women, talked to them, addressed them, saw the miseries and hardships of life, went to different corners of the world, addressed hundreds of, hundreds of universities, think tanks, thought leaders, parliaments, and many such gatherings. What was the motivation? To make people understand that there is a divinity within you and rouse, arouse that divinity. Each soul is potentially divine. Swami Vivekananda declared. And here is Swami Chinmayananda who said, that is what we have to achieve in life. Atmano moksha artham jagad hitayacha. And Swamiji, as you all know, founded Chinmaya Mission and I do not want to go into the details of Chinmaya Mission's work exemplary work and I need not uh, explain what your mission is doing. One specific thing about the sadhana that the Swamiji emphasized is sadhana is a spiritual dis discipline. He believed the sadhana would be enable one become effective cultural ambassadors of the country. And that sadhana, according to him, is possible through study, japa and meditation, swadhyayam, japam and dhyanam. Swadhyaya, japa, dhyan. And this sadhana will enable a person to make himself or herself a powerful, useful instrument in the service of the Lord. So that's why he emphasized on the Swadhyaya. And we all know Swamiji's uh, greatest contribution is he initiated the, he started the Gita Jnana Yajna. Years ago in Bangalore, National High School ground, I remember as a student of the college, Mintral College, I started attending his Gita Jnana Yajna. Evening it will be Gita Jnana Yajna and morning it will be Upanishad classes. And I think he is among the first to do so in public, where lectures based on Bharat's spiritual, scriptural wisdom. And by the time Swamiji left this world, he must have conducted more than 575 Gita Jnana Yajnas. What a masterly contribution. Krishna in Dwapara Yuga at the Kurukshetra did the Gita Upadesh. And in the Kali Yuga, the Kurukshetra is not confined to a piece of land in Haryana. The Kurukshetra is the entire world. The Kurukshetra is the entire universe today. And here is Bala Krishna who is, as Chinmayanda, is giving the Gita Upadesh. And it was not only for uh, 
acquiring punya that one should recite bhagavad gita to understand oneself to understand the nature around the creation to understand the relation between us to make oneself understand and follow the duty that one has to perform the way he was explaining bhagavad gita to the modern times in the language of the educated people that in english when he started in pune the number was 3 Three people were in front of Swami Chinmayananji in the first Gita Jnana Yajna. And Swamiji went on relentlessly. And when 576 Gita Jnana Yajna were over, thousands and thousands of people were gathering to hear this Swamiji's voice, the voice of Krishna, voice of Gita. and swami ji's inimitable style powerful language what a style sprinkled with humor and anecdotes he is not just doing pravachana but he is talking he is having a dialogue he asked the people in front of him i was witness to that i was we were mesmerized the body the mind the intellect when he was saying these things it, it, it was such a thrilling experience because he lived gita it was not just coming out from his lips every word every syllable every part, every feeling of gita every message of gita was lived by swami ji and he expected exhorted the people to do so that is why it was building that confidence the people who were hearing his pravachanas clive damas bhagava partha naitottoye paddate chudram hudaya daurbalyam tyakto trishta parantapa when arjuna in the battle field was expressing his sorrow running away from the battle what the gita acharya told him what is this nonsense you are doing anarya mastodyam you are doing it. this kaipya should go and here swami chinmayananda says the kaipya that is there in our hindu society kaipya is not in one individual person arjuna the kaipya that is there in the hindu society in bharat and that kaipya takto utishta parantapa give it up shun it Gita is karma yoga, and Swami Ji's for him spirituality was action. It was not just preaching. Swami Vivekananda says at one place, religion is not in books, nor in theory, nor in talking, but it is only in action. satyam vad dharmam chara that is what this ancient land has preached us dharma is not only for the preaching but it is to practice dharmam chara religion is not in books nor in theory nor in talking but it is only in action swami ji puja gurudev says spirituality is nothing but perfection in action such messages of our 
spiritual philosophical texts of this ancient land was in such mesmerizing miraculous way were being expressed by swami ji that's why hundreds and hundreds of people not only gathered in the gita gyan yajna and upanishad classes but they took to the work of the mission that is the vision he gave the mission was ready action followed there were hundreds and hundreds of schools service centers many such activities sprang up service oriented mission he believed that right thinking and good values were vital components of our efforts his teachings in vedanta prepared individuals to face challenges and equip them with mental strength fortitude and the courage to confront obstacles and to be ready to render service and to ready to face any onslaughts of our on our national honor and social culture swami ji was described as a teacher he was a spiritual master he was a teacher pritish nandi he in one of his interviews he described gurudev as teacher in his words pritish nandi's words a distinct i quote a distinguished scholar an ardent teacher and a compulsive globe trotter the swami is today held to be one of the few serious and credible missionaries that hinduism has to offer his missions are his missions are all over the world so are his devotees and students and they are growing at a rate that will soon perhaps make swami chinmayananda numero uno in the glittering pantheon of gurus rishis bhagwans and babas who have held sway over india's millions and many abroad in abroad in many ways this is the best thing that could have happened to hinduism for the swami for, for swami there is no quack healer or fast bucker merchant he offers no miracles to lure the gullible he makes no predictions reads no fortunes and signs sings peons to no politician he makes no claims to being a god generally in our country people and mostly the media paint them as god men swami ji did not claim any godhood except for the argument sake he sometimes said everything is brahma i am brahma you are brahma he simply teaches swami ji did not preach he taught a teacher will show the path a preacher many a time if not every time ask to imitate you do this a teacher will light the lamp and that is what swami ji did you find the way because the light is there so this is uh, swami ji's great contribution as a spiritual master swami ji had to face many odds and challenges as well a case in point is that when uh, he decided to come down to the plains and speak on the essence of the bhagavad gita and the upanishads he faced resistance for giving the lecture in english 
this was because back then for the first time a saint was giving lectures in English after Swami Vivekananda, I believe, was breaking the protocol of speaking on traditional Sanskrit texts. Because Bhagavad Gita is being explained, Upanishad is being explained in English language. Sanskrit is Deva Bhasha, English is Mlecha Bhasha. So how can you do this? So that's why there was some resistance. But soon people understood that here is a master who is explaining the essence of this ancient land which has been experienced for ages and ages. So that the modern man will also understand the importance of those teachings. And soon the people with the background of enlightened studies of the spiritual texts came in support of Swamiji. They welcomed, they honored, and they spread the word. So this is how Swamiji won the hearts of the people who were already rooted in the text and won the hearts of the people who were gullible because of the modern education. He had the challenge on both the ways, but he did it so wonderfully well and successfully did it. He envisioned youth-led empowerment and development. In his lecture, Youth Alone Can, in 1991, Swamiji firmly maintained that the vital people in the present are the youth, and thus he gave the youth two significant responsibilities. Number one, you have to wipe clean some of the weaknesses that have come in the past in our society, some stigmas, some wrongdoings, some weaknesses, shortcomings. You have to wipe clean them. And secondly, he exhausts the youth. You have to remold the present to a covetable future. Swamiji's famous quote is there, youth are not useless, they are used less. Swamiji wanted to include uh, the spiritual education in our education system. He, want, he suggested that the undergraduate certificate should be given to, on com, to the students on completion of uh, a three-month Vedanta course in Vedanta philosophy. Every student of this country, he should undergo a three-month Vedanta course and after completion of that only, his undergraduate course is completed, the certificate will be given. Such a thing should be there. That was Swamiji's idea. And today the new education policy is now slowly inching toward that with the introduction of Indian knowledge system and other things. Although it is not fully what Swamiji suggested or dreamt of. Swamiji's contribution to Hindu society, temple restoration. In 1988, Swamiji also came forward to support the renovation of the Badrinath temple and to provide facilities for the Yatris visiting Badrinath. Swamiji set up the Sandipani Swadhyaya Pavai, you all know, inspired by Rishi Sandipani, which continues to train seekers to share the ancient wisdom of the past that is bestowed on them. This unique spiritual university has had illustrious students, we all know, with great humility and respect. I remember the name of Swami Dayananda Saraswati who was a student of this institution and Swami Tejo Mayanandaji, who succeeded Swami Chimnayanandaji, leading not only Chinmaya mission, but providing leadership to the Hindu spiritual world. Swamiji had his own uh, 
inevitable style of convincing the people and thinking differently out of the box also. Somewhere it was written on the wall when he was going in Uttarakhand, God is nowhere. Swamiji just put a comma after the W, God is now here. And Swamiji, once a young doctor who had just joined the medical profession, came to get his copy of the Bhagavad Gita signed by Swamiji. Swamiji wrote a prescription to the doctor. Swamiji wrote, read two stanzas of Bhagavad Gita three times a day for three months. If the symptoms continues, repeat the dose. That was Swamiji. And Swamiji sir, many such things were there. Once he went to some shop where the idols of our uh, Hindu gods and goddesses are being sold. He wanted a Krishna idol, a Nikon. Swamiji said, See, you give me this Krishna idol and we'll pay. But the salesman is not ready. He said, no, no, the custom here is Krishna and Radha, both have to be taken, Radha and Krishna. You can't take Krishna alone. Then Swami said, I am Radha. Why should I take another Radha? Pratyutpannamati. And convincing. And thereby the underlying thing is a great spiritual thought. We all know in our great parampara, the tradition of divinity is that Radha and Krishna are not just two lovers of the modern day. The Lord and the Bhakta and that the divine love makes every Bhakta as Radha. And by simple one word to that salesman who is not attending Upanishad class or the Gita Jnana Yajna of Swamiji. But he must be a, a lifelong teaching for that salesman who has been selling Radha and Krishna every day. But he did not understand that Radha is myself and I'm, Krishna is also here. That is Pooja Gurudev. He had immense love for he can connect people to any, from here to the any far corner of the world. I remember an incident. Yesterday, I remember it again. The reason I will tell you in one minute. Swamiji, I should raise your hand when I am, because I don't know where I should stop. Swamiji had come to Bangalore once. A friend of mine who was studying MCOM then, who later on became a PhD, a professor in the college and then university, and he was attacked with polio except his one left hand, no limb is working. He has to be lifted. He has to be put in a wheelchair. He cannot walk, he cannot stand. His right hand doesn't work. Only his left hand works. And his brain works. And the heart is filled with love. And this young, young man, Swamiji saw him in a, and Swamiji said, don't worry. He remembered that there is a judge in the International Court of Hague 
International Court of Hague. And that judge can only move his head, neck, and the rest of the body is paralyzed. But he could reach the place of international judge in the court of Hague, in the international court. Have faith, have confidence. Swamiji told to this young man, and that young man, who is my friend, is Dr. M. K. Sridhar, who was given Padma Shri yesterday by Rashtrapati. Who are the member of education policy team? Who is an educationist? Yesterday I remembered. Swamiji told, have faith in life. You will achieve. And he gave that example of the international court judge. Friends, a seer who has been a seeker, a doer who makes millions to do, who inspires, who teaches, who exhorts, is a revolutionary. And here is a spiritual revolutionary. Swamiji wanted a worldwide Hindu organization for all the Hindus. Swamiji wanted the liberation of Ram Temple, Ram Janmabhumi. Swamiji called for Hindu vote bank. A unique idea. When Swamiji said this, many people might have question. Many people might have ridiculed also in their private circles. Many people might have said, what is this? Why Swamiji speaks politics? But here is a spiritual master who represents the age-old philosophical tradition of this land, knows the strength of the society based, rooted in culture, spiritual, past, and which aspires for a bright future. And Swamiji said, galvanize the Hindus. And his first public talk was, let us be Hindus. That was his talk. And in that talk, he said, let us try and bring about a renaissance of Hinduism so that under its greatness, as proved through many centuries, we may come to grow into the very heights of culture and civilization that were ours in the historical past. Hinduism is not this external show that we have learned to parade about in our daily lives. Hinduism is a science of perfection. There is in it an answer to every individual, social, national or international problem. True Hinduism is the Sanatana Dharma of the Upanishads. Upanishad and Gita were very dear to Swamiji. Sarva Upanishadu Gavo Dogda Gopananandana. Partho Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta Dugdam Gita Amritam Mahat. The essence of Upanishad is in Bhagavad Gita. And here is Swamiji who say that this Karma Yoga. for the entire humanity. A sage, a saint, a master, a spiritual seeker and a seer will never confine himself to a small identity of a village or a language of a nation or a religious community. He belongs to the entire universe. He embraces the universe. His heart becomes the home for the universe. He becomes one with the universe. And Swami Chinmay Ananda Ji, our Pooja Gurudeva, was one such great representative of this holy land Bharat. I 
as the follower devotee of this great master and such masters can only remember that the social transformation that they wanted they guided in their inter informal talks and formal addresses through their actions through their interactions through their writings that this society should get transformed for a modern day but without losing its cultural philosophical roots contextualize the original thoughts and experiences of civilizational wisdom of this land and thereby uplift the entire humanity and that is the mission and for that sake india was to be liberated by the foreign yoke and for that reason and purpose ram janmabhoomi was to be liberated and for that purpose the practices of untouchability and such have to go and to that to achieve that objective every human being will have to think and do the way that our spiritual texts and masters have ordained us how i am useful to the society what we have is his gift what we do with what we have is our gift to him vedanta is the art of living and it can be pursued in all circumstances at all places whether it be in your house or in factory or in the field hinduism is the religion of maximums maximum good to the maximum people in the maximum ways and the maximum time swami ji's words god in any form can be worshiped if you are worship a home a swastik or in the cross or in the crescent you are worshiping in form or formless saguna sakar or nirguna niraka god is in human being god is in inanimate things but the question is how much your sincerity and devotion is there that matters that is what swami ji taught us sisters and brothers i think i should now end i stand here with all humility and sense of achievement on behalf of the organization that i work for for the nation the rss i said i am standing here with sense of fulfillment and humility the two most important themes are the orders of swami ji that there should be a grand ram temple and there should be a worldwide hindu organization i think on the occasion of his 108th birth anniversary i should say we have tried to achieve this and that is our offering at the feet of pooja gurudev the spiritual revolutionary and the spiritual colossus namaskar